Hey everybody, welcome back to Reaction Reviews. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing my very first ever full-length, in-depth movie review. And the movie I'm going to be reviewing today is Terminator Dark Fate, uh, the 2019 brand new uh, sixth installation in the Terminator franchise. Now, uh, I'll warn you ahead of of time uh, right up front this is going to be a heavy spoiler review so if you haven't seen uh, the film yet you may want to avoid this but before I get into the spoilers I'll just go ahead and give you the bare bones um, I'm rating this film a 2 out of 5 that's pretty low for me um, I'm a big fan of the Terminator franchise um, I love the first two especially and then the ones after that I thought they were good but this one uh, just to suffice to say I felt like this was the worst Terminator film so far, and that's saying a lot. So now let's get into the in-depth spoiler review. Okay, so the film started out great, I thought, using a clip from Terminator 2 to establish that this was a direct sequel to the classic film. The subsequent installations in the franchise having been canceled out due to an alternative timeline being established. Now, I don't see this as a retcon, but a logical extension of the time travel rules established in the very first film. The other films still happened, but they're now part of a defunct timeline. Fans of Salvation, Rise of the Machines, and Genesis can still consider those films canon, while those who disliked them can ignore them due to their irrelevance to this new timeline. And that's smart marketing, in my view. Now, a lot of fans had issues with young John Connor being assassinated in the opening scene. But personally, I liked the bold originality. They were giving us something new and unexpected. I loved seeing Linda Hamilton, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Edward Furlong de-aged, rather than recasting the actors. Now that we have the filmmaking technology to pull off this technique, I'd like to see it used more. For me, it goes a long way to maintain the integrity of the continuity, and it doesn't pull me out of the film as recasting usually does. Mackenzie Davis was great as Grace, but her appearance seemed to be a direct knockoff of scenes from the original Terminator and the season one finale of the Sarah Connor Chronicles TV series. Likewise, the Rev-9 Terminator seemed to be too similar to Robert Patrick's T-1000. It made me feel like I had seen this film before, demonstrating a lack of creativity on the part of the filmmakers. Now, maybe I'm wrong here, but it seems to me that there's only so many times you can hear a variation of the come with me if you want to live line before it becomes cliche. And the I'll be back line, this time delivered by Linda Hamilton, was even worse. It was just too darn forced, unlike Carl's I won't be back line, which actually felt right. Later on, Grace's speech to Danny about not risking herself is a complete knockoff of Sarah's identical speech to John in T2. And seconds later, the Reb 9 copies the T-1000's Say, that's a nice bike line, only this time in reference to a helicopter. I practically recited the line with him as he was saying it. And that, I think, is lazy writing. Worst of all, they had Danny deliver John Connor's line, There is no fate but what we make for ourselves, despite her never having met him, or his father Kyle who taught it to Sarah. Having Danny not only take over his role, but even usurp his dialogue, was an unforgivable insult to John Connor's memory. Now, I can take her taking over John's role symbolically, but they didn't even bother to give her her own personality. They just wrote John Connor verbatim as a minority. And that was an insult to the fans, to John Connor, and to Danny Ramos. The epitome of lazy writing. Now, some of the callbacks seemed spot on. For example, Dwight Yoakam's guitars, Cadillacs, and Hillbilly music playing at the barbecue, calling back to the biker bar scene from T2. Subtle enough to not be in your face, but recognizable by diehard fans. But there were some poor filmmaking decisions and outright goofs that I noticed too. In the factory scene, for example, I immediately noticed Grace's hidden gun, which seemed like a mistake to me. They didn't have to show the barrel sticking out for us to know she had it, but having it stick out made her and the security guards look incompetent. And the Rev-9's knees didn't bend when he did that huge jump. 
it made the effect look cheap. A lot of the other effects were great, but the bad ones stood out like a sore thumb. The airplane sequence was stupid, with the characters floating around like they were in weightless orbit. We had the obligatory car chase with the Terminator in a huge armored vehicle, and his splitting into two different Terminators didn't make sense to me. It made for a cool visual, but it directly contradicted where T2 established that they could only mimic objects of comparable size and volume. And speaking of the new Terminators, in this installment they seemed like a mix between a Terminator and Alien. It was creepy as hell, and it made me wonder if this might lead to an Alien crossover showing that Alien DNA was actually incorporated into the Terminator's tech. Now I guess that would make sense, that the Resistance would use similar tech in the creation of their augments. Human Terminator augments on one side, and Terminator Alien augments on the other. I did like the cell phone scene. Uh, Sarah threw away Danny's cell phone because the Reb-9 could track it, but she kept her own cell phone in a potato chip bag that could block the signal. I expected Danny to come back with something along the lines of, well, why didn't you just put my cell phone in the bag too? Now, you could take that as a contradiction, but I took it as Sarah just didn't care about losing Danny's phone. That was good humor, I thought. The uh, flashback scene to the future with the Terminators uh, seemed a little bit video gamey, even reminding me of the troop carrier scene from the end of Attack of the Clones. Now this was one of the problems I had with Terminator Salvation 2. In 2019, I expect better CGI. Terminator Dark Fate did a good job of continuing the franchise's cautionary narrative about the dangers of artificial intelligence and a shadow government taking advantage of society's dependence upon technology. The film relied too much on callbacks, though, taking the Force Awakens strategy to a whole new absurd level. Callbacks are great for nostalgia, but Dark Fate simply didn't do them well, in my opinion. As much as I loved having Hamilton and Schwarzenegger back, I consider Dark Fate to be the worst installment in the entire Terminator franchise. While the filmmakers made some great calls in casting, the writing was some of the laziest and cringiest SJW crap this side of Disney Lucasfilm. They even had the obligatory, we don't need no man to save us line that took a steaming dump on John Connor's grave and his own mother took a big spoonful and swallowed it whole. Then Grace sacrificed herself in a finale that ripped off Schwarzenegger's sacrifice from T2, flaming metal factory and all. But fortunately, they let Carl share that honor at the last minute, with two memorable and heart-wrenching last words for John. Now that was a nice touch, but not enough to save the film in my opinion. I walked out of the theater after about 15 minutes on my first viewing and gave it a second chance on the recommendation of my good friend Rhodes Rants, who said I didn't wait long enough. By the way, head on over to Rhodes Rants channel and check out his stuff if you haven't already. He's got some great content covering everything from Star Wars, Marvel, DC, the latest horror films, and much more. But on his recommendation, I sprung for a second ticket in order to give the film a fair chance. And although I'm glad I did watch it all the way through, I regret, this, I regret giving this piece of garbage my money twice. But the good news is, you don't have to. Honestly, I wouldn't pay to rent Dark Fate from Redbox. But if you insist on seeing it for yourself, I recommend waiting until it's free on satellite or network television. But if it were me, I'd just get out the original Terminator and T2 and just watch them over again instead. Anyway... That's my spoiler review for Terminator Dark Fate. Did you see it too? If so, do you agree with my review? Let me know your opinions in the comments section. And as with any film review, opinions, of course, are subjective. So I'm sincerely interested in your opinions too. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when new episodes of Reaction Reviews come out. Also, by subscribing, you'll be eligible to win the free Star Wars trade paperback that I'm giving away to a random subscriber when I reach 100 subs. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. May the Force be with you all.